step is coming. What has happened? Your own self. It is still there. Unfortunately. Mm. Or fortunately. Of course, we don't believe in fortune. And luck. But it's, it's really sad that we forget that we still have this old nature and the new nature has come in because of God's Spirit. And that's what it's talking about in terms of the conflict. You see, when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, that new nature is now given you, in a sense, a struggle. Before you didn't care what you did, what you do. Maybe you did, because you had a sense of right and wrong, but it doesn't make that much of a deal. See, we say in Australia, no worries. No, small stuff. Okay, so when you think of uh, the choice of spirit and flesh, it goes to another aspect. And it says in in a later in a later verse, uh, oh wait, sorry, the next question is the choice. Okay, forgot there was one more. The flesh, what is it? Okay. So the flesh is our own nature. The flesh is everything aside from God. Yeah, fix that. You're wrong. The question the answer came before the question. So what is the flesh or the law? Everything aside from God which one places his final trust. Salvation. It can also mean one's sense of security, self esteem. Well being and happiness. I know that um, there are times when we base our feelings of uh, or being, having feelings of being secure on the things we have or the people around us. We often think of uh, the flesh as just the worldly things that we do, but it doesn't have to be. It can even be our self effort our best to do what is right. And that, of course, um, leads us to the next question, or the next part. It says, if you are what? If you are what is it? by the Spirit, Living, or some you can have, you can also say living by the spirit. If you are dead or living by the spirit, you will certainly not carry out the desires of the flesh. One of the things that I found really beneficial in my studies at Dallas is that I'm beginning to learn the New Testament Greek and reading through some words that make a lot of difference. Not as I highlighted the word, certainly not. In the Greek New Testament, the word "pume" is a double negative. If you did that, the English teacher would be angry. Right, John? I ain't done nothing wrong. So that sort of thing. You know? It's it's really a bad a bad grammar. Uh, the Greeks, of course, are very strict with grammar. They want to speak what the word says in a very exact way. So when they say "certainly not," it means you will surely, 100%, garantizado, we say, in Spanish, and in Filipino. No. It doesn't say, don't walk in the flesh. There's no need for that warning. Because if you are living by the Spirit, if you are led by the Spirit, the outcome, the result will be, you won't walk in the flesh. I hope that's great. And Paul is making that absolutely clear. You see, to be under the grace of God, and we've been studying this in Galatians, it's either you're under grace or you're under the law. And the flesh is often associated with the law. The law most ten commandments. For the Galatian Christians, it's the uh, elementary principles of what is right or wrong based on their conscience. You see, 
you and I, before we became Christians, knew what's right and wrong. A small child, you can tell that it's done something wrong when they look in his eyes, isn't it? Or turning his eyes away from you. We have that sense of what is right and wrong. Our conscience tells us. But the Galatian Christians, we were warned in our study, they went from having just the conscience of telling what's right and wrong to having the Spirit of God in their hearts. In other words, turning their lives over to Christ and knowing God's Word as the Spirit lives in their heart. But then they started to turn back to the law of Moses, the traditions, the practices. And what happens then is they're now starting to, they started to um, go away from what the Gospel is saying. And that's what the, Paul is saying here too. If you are lived by the Spirit, if you are living by the Spirit and living under grace, by the way, grace is what you don't merit. It's undeserved, right? It's a gift. And what is the greatest gift of grace? The Holy Spirit. The promise that was given to Abraham. Through your seed, it says in the Old Testament, the promise will be given. The promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, stay with me. Uh, the argument keeps, keeps on going. This is just argument number one. There's a choice to make. Because the next aspect of this choice is the evidence of your life in the Spirit. Okay, we just memorized the fruit of the Spirit, but we didn't bother memorizing the works of the flesh, if you like the fruit of the flesh. And what are these things mentioned in Galatians that are the fruit of the flesh, or the works of the flesh? Verse 19. There's a long list, so I'll just pick up a few, because we don't have a lot of time. It mentions sexual immorality. I can see it quite well. It also mentions idolatry. Okay, so, and it goes on through a whole list, but we'll just take up uh, the ones that are pertaining here. So it even says enmities, envy, and drunkenness. I picked up ones that stand out because these are grouped together. Okay? The old Bible talks about immorality as sexual immorality as fornication. And a lot of uh, people don't understand what fornication means nowadays. Uh, especially the younger people. When the Bible talks about fornication, it talks about a relationship between somebody who's not married. Uh, so that they're committing fornication. But the, this, this part of the passage talks more about anything that is not in accordance with what God doesn't agree with what God's uh, uh, design is for sexual relationships. So you can have any number of things aside from fornication, adultery, uh, homosexuality, um, even to the extent of some of the practices that are considered perversions. You see, we live in a world where, like the Greek and the Romans back then, they think that there's nothing wrong with sexual immorality, as long as it's not to an excess. So we frown at people like you, Hefner, but it's okay for somebody who we know, who has uh, extramarital affairs, as long as it's not uh, uh, one where it is a permanent arrangement. The Holy Spirit in your life would mean that this sort of practice would be inconsistent with God's Spirit in you. And we know the verses that pertain to that. The one in Corinthians about you should not be partnering with somebody who is not uh, a Christian. So even to that extent um, of finding your life partner, you need to think about whether the God, whether God's Spirit can partner with someone who doesn't have God's Spirit. I know that's uh, an issue that may uh, entail some, you know, looking into oneself, especially for those of you who are married already. 
and you think about having a non-Christian partner. But God, in His grace, allows such things to happen so that we can realize that partnership with someone who hasn't got the Holy Spirit leads to problems. And that should serve as a warning to our young people. Because the Bible talks about sexual immorality to the extent of partnering with someone sexually. And, the, and in this case, the Greek word used has to do with the, uh, prostitutes. So that in itself is uh, contrary to what the Bible says because the prostitute would not have any sense of God's presence in, in her life or his life. Unless, of course, God has changed that person. But not, we won't get too much into that because I'd like to proceed to the other aspects of um, the, the works of the flesh. It also mentions idolatry. Now, this is a biggie. We call it Australia. Sorry, I'm not using Australian terms. It's a big thing. It's, it's actually idolatry, as we said earlier, is anything that takes the place of God, whether it be money. A relationship, sex, or other things that preoccupy your mind other than God. Your focus is that that aspect of your life. Psychologists say that people get into problems because they focus their minds on things that are just occupying their minds altogether. So why would a perfectly happily married man with a uh, beautiful wife, uh, lots of money, a uh, good career, and who do you think of when I'm mentioning all this? Tiger Woods, leave his wife for another woman. Or women, for that matter. Okay, that's another woman. Why would people do some such silly things as leave the love of their lives? Whether you're married or not married, the love of your life is supposed to be God, isn't it? He's your number one love. And so, idolatry, whether it be an image made in the image of God, of course, uh, an image made for to represent God, or some other things, is anything that we worship outside of God. Then it mentions dissensions, en envy, and you might probably, uh, and dissensions is enmities. And uh, you might be wondering if I have a quarrel with somebody, how can that be? Walking in the flesh. Think about it. When you have, when you envy someone else, why could that be? Why could that be walking in the flesh? Or drunkenness, especially with uh, Australians being drunk once in a while is not a big thing. Now, I'm sure it is here too. And for young people, that's something that you do on Friday nights with your friends. That becomes a habit and becomes like a lifestyle for a lot of people. But uh, let's continue on. I want to go through each and every one of those. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. John 3 16. God so loved the world, we all know that. A self giving, a self sacrificing, wanting the best for the beloved. Not a feeling, not an act of the heart alone, but an act of the mind. What else? So that's the fruit of the spirit. Let's see if it comes out right. Is love in John three sixteen, self giving, self sacrificing, and wanting the best for the one you love. Okay, continuing. What else? Joy. And I look around. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. When I look around, oh, we got the answers first before the questions. <laughs> Actually, I did this all last night and it, it worked. So I guess uh, something between the transmission of my USB to the thing and it doesn't work. And you think that this will rattle me because I uh, know, oh no, but I think. I have peace. <laughs> <laughs> and I have joy in knowing that the message will come through. And somehow we can fix this before the next service. 